So we're going to go, um, we'll be doing the medial and lateral sides of both hallux. We're just prepping with chlorhexidine solution. Now you don't even have to put the chlorhexidine here, but if you really want to irritate your patient, just put it on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so we've got that chlorhexidine. So we've already tested that the, the toes are anesthetized. We'll put both chlorhexidine on. Why don't you use the Thwaites holes? Hmm? Why don't you use the Thwaites? Um, because the Thwaites is, it's got one side of it elevates the nail and it's going to elevate this good portion of nail. If we elevate the good portion of nail, then when we apply the phenol, we can get underneath that. And then you'll get lysis occurring, the nail can start to lift. So you just screw the nail first to create a groove? Yep, so just creating a groove and go down with the beaver blade. What about if it's a quite a graphotic or thickened nail? You can uh, thin the nail down. Just prior? Yep, just prior. <coughs> if your beaver blade's sharp, it'll, it'll go through. So cut down. And that's it, then we'll get the elevator. And this section has been cut and just loosen up that portion of nail. This nail has been obviously cut prior. Some triangulation on it. There we are. Put the hemostats right down and just as normal pull it out. And then you can see some of that soft tissue there that will need to, to go. If you don't have a tourniquet, what do you sometimes use? Uh, the glove. Uh, there's a little the finger glove technique. Wrap it up on the top of the hallux and then bring it down. Mm. Which I think I've shown you in one of the other videos. It works really good. And then we're going to make sure that those cuts were nice and straight after we get the nail out. So just checking that nice good. It's also straight. It's also straight and you can see that this portion of nail has not been lifted at all. So if you've got the elevator and then start to stick underneath, and then you've got the thwaites, guaranteed you're going to lift a couple of millimeters on that portion of the nail. That is really well attached, 
and it'll minimize any chance of phenol getting underneath there. So you can use a curette to apply the phenol. We're just going to pop it down near the germinal matrix on both ends. And we'll let that act there. Dry up any excess. Since you're a YouTube star, I saw one of your previous YouTube videos about a phenol burn. Oh, because you're in that video. <laughs> you start in that video, right? Do you find using a curette and not lifting a nail prevents any sort of phenol getting underneath the nail? Yeah, you don't, um, you just really don't need much. Sometimes I'll even use a smaller curette than this. And, and then you, just... You're pretty uh, strict on your time. You 60 minutes, 60 seconds times 3, or 45 seconds. I usually apply it until I see the tissue blanching and it looks sort of... Well, once it starts to blanch. So I don't go by time very often anymore. I don't. I'm not strict with getting the the stopwatch. Once I see the tissue changing color, that's when I stop. And normally that's about 90 minutes, 90 seconds to two minutes. In general, what do you find some of the common reasons PNS fail? Um, if you don't remove the hypogranulation tissue enough, especially in the proximal end. So you can, sometimes you've still got tissue here and it folds back over onto the nail and you've got an ingrown again. Um, if the, the nail has not been cut perfectly straight and sometimes if when you're cutting with the, the beaver, because the nail underneath here it's softer and it's thinner. So when you cut, sometimes it can actually sky rather than cutting through, so you've got to make sure that it cuts through properly. Other reasons of fat is it's pretty it's a pretty good technique. And do you flush or use glycerol to try and neutralize the phenol at all? Yes, I flush. Um, but whatever you flush with saline. If you let it bleed through or if you flush with chlorhexidine, it's not actually neutralizing the phenol. That doesn't neutralize, you're diluting the phenol. So remember, phenol will act afterwards. We'll keep on acting for a little while. So always have something ready just to, to mop up any excess phenol. When would you choose a red resection of a partial nail avulsion? Partial nail avulsions are a great procedure. Um, probably the majority of nail surgery I'll do a partial nail avulsion just like any other pod. Wed resections when the hypogranulation tissue is just out of control. It's really overlapping the nail. Or I'll use it when uh, a partial null avulsion's partial null avulsion's already been performed, especially if it's a couple of times. Then I, I wouldn't do it a third time. I think a podiatrist does a all podiatrists do partial null avulsion's pretty good. Is that just a some saline deals? Uh, no, it's um, cool cool heads. Just cool heads. Let's give that a good wipe down. You can dress this many ways, we're just going to put nylon dressing on it first. Are those size 10 gloves also? Hmm? 
Are they size 10 gloves? Why are they looking too big? <laughs> Why? Mm, this is the gloves look a bit tight. It's, these are size 8, buddy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh, different story. Absolutely. Yeah. You take turns? Yeah. She does two feeds during the night and one we do one each. And we swap it each night because one's like one o'clock and then what the other one's like five or five, six o'clock. We swap it every night. So she's eating alright. Yeah. She um she just went to four hourly things and she's putting on yeah. Mm. How much weight since I saw you last? She's over three kilos now. Right. So Before she, she was two and a half, I think, when we last came here, and now she's 3.2. Yeah, so she, she's putting on about 700 grams in a week. That's good. She's doing well. So how long have we been recording for now? That's in total. Probably think. 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Maybe less, but because the phone call has stopped. Uh, what do you like reviewing? So in three to five days, I normally get the patient in. Get them to keep it dry in about five days, usually three to five days, depending on where they live and circumstances. I get them to come in, take all the dressings off, make sure it's not infected, hasn't bled through too much. What's your protocol with pain management? Just paracetamol. You want to be careful, ibuprofen, so you can thin the blood to and try and avoid that. And what's your dosage on the paracetamol? Just 500 milligrams times two, every six hours, if required, to be honest, not, not even a, a must.